Now we saw that we can get an X from a z-score by just multiplying and adding. You can also use this equation to transform the distribution's mean and standard deviation to be something else that you want it to be. Now remember, changing the mean and standard deviation doesn't change the distributional shape or its other characteristics. You're not changing its modality, its skewness. All you're doing here is changing where we're sliding it. So if you imagine a distribution sitting along a number scale from 0 to 100, and the distribution has a certain shape, right? And maybe that makes its mean here 15. We could take that distribution and we can slide it. So it has this same spread, the same standard deviation and the same center point, but we slide that distribution down here. And now we've made it have a mean maybe of 90, right? And we can change the values without changing the distribution. And it's just this idea of moving it kind of along the scale. So we can do that by picking what values we want the mean and standard deviation to reflect. And we can impute them into this. So if we say we had an original distribution that had a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10, but we now want the distribution to have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of two. We can do that by taking the z-scores and using this information to obtain our new x-scores, which tells us what the raw score would be if the distribution was summarized in this way. So if we have an x-score we want, and we know the z-score is 1.5, and we have a, now we want a two standard deviation instead of a 10, and then we want it to be centered around 50, we can do this and we get x equals 53. So a z-score of 1.5 in this distribution would be an x-score of 53. Now, we could also find easily that z-score in the distribution of 110. And if we wanted to do that, use a new color here, we would have x equals, and now we want the standard deviation to be 10, and our z-score here of 1.5. And, and so we're going to add that to our mean of 100, and so in this case, we're going to get the x in this distribution is 115. And you, so what you can see in either case, we are 1.5 standard deviations above average. So the relative location is unchanged, the shape of the distribution is unchanged, but we can make this distribution be whatever we want in terms of its mean and its standard deviation, and it won't change the relative locations of the scores within it. So this allows you to then standardize a test to have whatever measure you want for the mean. We can make it 20 or 100, and it doesn't change the scores, locations relative to one another within it.